So on that day, on the last lecture, I told you to create a project in your React folder. Let's create React app and the project name. So if I have the project uh, five, I will say project zero 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 five. And if I want to make six, I will make six. So on that day, I told everyone to create a project because whatever I do today, you have to put in the React project. And if you're not done, you can go back the last few lectures to see how to do that. So on the last class, we were doing the props and we created we created main component and I'm calling I'm calling the parent component this parent component and inside the parent component I'm calling the child component this is the child component and from the top app component I am passing some variables to the parent component and from parent component I am passing the variables to the child component and child component getting the variables so this is how we pass the variables from the parent to child and child to still more grandchild components today I will finish this props but to complete the props I want to explain one more thing about the props and that is the following so let's first understand little bit basics of what I am going to show you and then I will do it so for example if I have variable called as array air, and I have elements 1 2 3 and I have another variable array 2 and I have the elements 4 5 6 then if I create a new variable array 3 and I want to merge I want to merge both the arrays so there are a lot of ways we can merge we have seen concatenation method also long back but today which I am going to show a way it's called the spread operator so here I will create an array I will create an array and here I will say dot 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 array that is this array when I say dot 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 array the element inside this rectangular bracket that is one two three will be taken from this array and put it here inside the array three and then I will say comma dot 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 array two so here also when I put three dot this is called the spread operator it means it will take all these elements inside this array it will take inside this array what we have three elements it will take it and put it here and the array 3 will have 1 2 3 and 4 5 6 element inside it so when I check array 3 it will have all the elements in it so what we are doing I am putting array in all the three elements 1 2 3 inside here and I am putting all the elements 4 5 6 inside here and so I get the merging of the two arrays now what will happen if I don't put dot 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 if I say array 4 is equal to array and array 2 just I put without dot 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 then what will happen when I do this array 4 you will see it will have two elements array and another array each one will be of three elements so it's not merging together it's separate array it's creating two elements with each having its own array but here we are merging the two that is it's taking the three elements and putting it here and just taking these three elements putting it here so this is what we do the merging of array and this is called the spread operator a spread operator means it will not take this rectangular bracket it will take all the elements inside it and it will put it here so that is the one part about array let's talk about the object so here if I object 1 is equal to let's say I say a equal to 1 b equal to 2 okay this is my object 1 and I will create another object that is 2 and this object will have c equal to 3 but this second object will have a also a equal to 4 okay so I have object 1 with a and b and the object 2 with c and a is repeated again now let's see how to use the spread operator in this object I will create third object object 3 
is equal to since this is object I will use the curly bracket whereas in case of array I was using the rectangle bracket now I will use the curly bracket <coughs> now what I will do I will take the object 1 so I will say dot 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 object 1 and I will say dot 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 object 2 now what will happen this a and b will be merged inside here and c and a will be merged here but a is already here so what do you think what will happen to a whether a will get the value of 1 or whether a will get value of 4 or whether there will be 2a inside this object 3 what do you think what we have Ashok Kumar is saying 2a Anand is saying a equal to 4 okay so generally generally in object you cannot have a two times there can be only one there there can be unique keys so when we have 2a then that means it will not uh, it will not be 2a inside the final object because keys are unique so what do you think what will be the value of a Anand is saying value of a will be 4 Ola is saying value of 1 any other answer I want answer from Kate Kate where are you tell me the answer four so Kate is saying four okay Pranali is saying one okay Jasper is saying one okay let's see what will be the answer so if I do object three a is 4 and B is 2 C is 3 because object 2 is written after object 1 so all the values of object 2 overrides the value of object 1 that's the reason we get the value of A as 4 so it will not consider the top one it will consider the second one because second one overrides the top one and if I write var object 4 is equal to dot 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 object 2 comma dot 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 object 1 then what will happen what will be the value of a if I write object 2 and object 1 1 1 right now everyone is right let's say check it object 4 we have a equal to 1 why because this object 1 overrides the object 2 that is how we work in the uh, we work uh, in the objects so this is called the spread operator and I already explained what is the rest operator rest operator is also using dot 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 but it is used in the function when we have for example a comma b comma dot 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 rest we can use the rest of the elements in the function okay so that is how we process in rest I, I spent two three days back what is the rest operator if you have you missed that class you can go back and uh, check that class again okay so that's all about the spread operator for today now let's try let's jump to our uh, props again <coughs> so now this is my app.js I can start the local host So this is my the app dot app component and I'm passing three components here. When I go to the parent component, I'm getting name, age and gender. Let's see if I remove name, age and gender. Right now let's delete this part also. I'm not going to explain this now. I'm talking about some props now. So let's delete this name, age and gender for now and I will use props. So here what will happen to this props props is the object which comes from the parent so props will have name age and gender as a key value pair so let's check that one so if I want to see what is the props is having I will do console.log props are props so let's see what props is coming app is calling parent and in the parent we are passing these three variables if I go to the parent I 
pass it as a props and I see, check what are the props coming in the parent. So if I refresh this page, you will see props is getting name, age and gender. I can pass more values also. Maybe I can say is married equal to true. I can say hobbies equal to uh, maybe I can say hobbies is case movies eating okay these are the hobbies now let's see what will happen here so in the props I'm getting age gender is married name and hobbies so we are getting all these key value pairs in the parent parent now let's say we have one two three four five five variables are there there may be more sometimes it is 20 variables we have to pass if the website is complex sometimes it is 50 variables we have to pass okay we don't know what variables are there so we can we can do like this curly bracket and we can put it here as it was before but we have props now this is the object and of this object is having five elements now let's say if I want to if I want to if I want to pass this props in the child in the child component I have I have the option that I can say I can say props dot name or props dot gender or props dot age one second one second So, so this way I can pass few variables to the child one and in the child one if I want to see child I'm getting all this variable here. But let's say if I want to pass all these variables to the child one, I have the option I can say age equal to props dot age, gender equal to props dot gender, hobbies equal to props dot hobbies, is married equal to props dot is married, name equal to props dot jack, uh, props dot name. So I can, I can do this for all the variables. But there is one shorter way also where I can pass all the props directly to the child element. Now before I go to the child, let's see what props are coming in the child one. I will put, I will say here child props. Okay, let's see what props are coming in the child. So in the child, we are getting gender and age only. But what if I want to pass all this together in the child? So for that, I can say, I can say curly bracket dot 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 props. That means I will be passing all the props directly to the child component. So I don't have to manually write props dot gender, props dot age, props dot name, props dot age. Now child will get all the properties or props from the parent which parent will receive from the app. So now if I refresh the page, child is getting all the properties. So it is optional that you, the recording is there, recording is started, it's already recording. So it is, it is optional, you pass it manually all the variables like gender, age, name and all or you can pass directly by passing dot 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 props. So it's up to you if you want to pass directly all the props there or if you want to pass manually each one separately. So that depends on you whatever you prefer but this is the option where we can pass that to another component. Personally, I, I will, I would prefer to pass it manually whatever I want to pass because this way I know what things I am passing to the child component rather than passing whole props to the child component. So practically I will suggest use this method rather than passing the props. Okay, so those who have also not attended the past class, today class will be little bit separate so you can understand 
without uh, without going to the past concepts. Few concepts are needed, but most of the concept will be new today. So this one was the revision I did about the props. Now I will do the new topic which I want to tell you today. But this, is this clear? Props part. Okay, so there are, uh, now I just want to tell one announcement that we stopped the data structure few days back because I wanted to start the React part, but I will start the data structure soon in a few weeks after I'm done with the React part and we will be doing more than 200 problems, which are practical problems and most probably you will get uh, problem from this 200 problems only when you go for interview. So you have to wait for a few weeks when then I will start the data structure with 200 problems. So those who wants to do data structure, they can wait for a few weeks. Okay, so. okay let's go to the another topic in the, in the React part. We completed this props part. Now I will go to explain the state. We already did some projects in the state, like we did something in here. If you remember, I used the state here. So let's let's drill down more into the state today, because that one was only project. But I will today explain a little bit more about the state. Okay, let's go to the project file. I'll go to the project file and I'll start npm start. Okay, till it starts, let's start the working on this one. So this is my app.js. I will delete everything which I have. I will import React from React here and I'll delete all the all the content here. I'll go to index.js file. I'll delete the index.css file. Okay, so okay, because I don't want to do CSS part now, so I deleted the CSS call. Okay, let's see now. So if I refresh it now, it's saying hello world. Okay, let's do the state part now. Now, we, we have seen the props, and the props are not modified. Means you cannot modify the props. So if you pass a props from one parent to child, uh, I'll just go through it. You are passing the props from main component to the parent component. In the parent component, you cannot change the name. Name is passed from the app component, and it is passed as a props. So props always are read only. If you try to change name here, or if you try to change props, then it becomes very bad coding, and it may not work in many of the cases. So you will get a lot of bugs and issues. So never try to change the value of the props anywhere in your coding. So if you want to change the name or age or gender, then we have to use the state variables. We have to use state variables. So today we will go through the state variables. What are the state variables? How to change it? The state variable. So to to create the state variable, I have to use any constant, late, or var. Since it is E6, I always use constant. And then I will say the variable name, whatever variable name you want to give. So for example, you want to put the variable name, name. And here you have to say react.use state. And you have to put some default name. For example, I don't want to uh, give the name. I can make it empty. But if I want to give some default name, I can say Jack as a default name. So once I say react.use state, 
then this name will become the state variable and we can change the value of the name. We can change the value of the name. Right now it is Jack, we can change it to Back, Tony, whatever I want. But before I change it, let's display this name here in this page. So I will just say H1 my app and here I'll create div and here say my name is name. So since this name is a variable, to use the variable in this HTML, we have to always use the curly bracket. And I put the variable name here. Now whatever the value of name will be there, it will be displayed here. So let's check on the page. So it is saying my name is Jack. Now this name is a state variable because we have created like a use state. Whenever I use the word use state, that means I'm creating the variable and whatever name I give it to that variable. Now let's similar to name, I will create few more variable state variables. For example, age. Since it is numeric, I will remove the quotation. I will say 34. And here I will say my age is age. <coughs> okay, so then we will see it is showing my age is 34. Now let's add one more variable, gender. And here I will say male. And let's try to display the gender. Okay, so this is the gender variable. My name is it. My, sorry, my gender is. Okay, so this is all three uh, variables I created. And I displayed all three variables here. Okay, now how to change the variable? So let's say I create three buttons and each button will be used to change the variable names. So I will create a button, change name. Okay, so first button is change name. Second button is change age. Third button is change gender. Okay, so when someone will click this button, first button, I want to change the name to something different. When I say change age, I will change the age. When I change, click the change gender, I will say change gender. Okay, so these three things we will do now. So what I have to do on click. On click, I have to write, I have to start with the curly bracket. And here I have to write a function. I can write an arrow function like this. And inside this arrow function, I will write some code. So here, what code I have to write? I have to change the name. <coughs> Sorry. So in React, if you want to change the state variable, I created a variable. I have the option of creating another parameter here. And that parameter will be the function. And the function name will be whatever you want to give. Here, I will give the name of set name. So if I want to change the name, I have to call this function, which is the second parameter in this line. And we pass this second parameter to the use state. And whenever I call the set name with any parameter, it will change the name variable. So for example, here I can say set name. And in the bracket, whatever I will put, that will be the new value of the name variable. So this name variable will get the new value, whatever I put it here. So for example, I put it Tony. So whenever I click button, this chain name, this function is called, which I have written here, this is the arrow function. And what it is calling set name. Set name is a function to change the value of name. When, so we created three state variables. Now we want to change the value of these variables. So how to change the value of the variables? By calling another parameter, and this parameter will be used to change the value of name. I can name it anything. I can say f, then I have to use f here. I can say x. If I put x here, I will use x here to change the name. So whatever value I put here, that will be same used to change the name. So for example, right now I will put set name. So it is easily understandable. And then here I will say set name here. <coughs> now we'll see if button is working correctly. Now if I click the chain name, 
you see name is changed to Tony and I see the new name here. But when I click age, nothing is happening. When I click gender, nothing is happening. So we need to we need to create a function for that also. I will say set age and here I will say set gender. Now what I will do when someone will click age, I will say on click equal to curly bracket and inside I will put arrow function. Arrow function if you don't know, I will explain in detail later if you don't know. So you have to tell me if you don't know what is the arrow function is. I already explained in few lectures back but if someone is new, he don't know arrow function, I can explain it again. Here I will say set age and I can give new age, whatever I want. Okay, so now here I will say on click, I will put arrow function and I will say set gender and here I will say female. Okay, so when someone will click age, I change the age. When someone will click gender, I change the gender and someone will click name, I change the name. Let's see here. I change the name, it becomes Tony. I change the age, it becomes 21. I change the gender, it becomes female. So this is how we uh, we change the name, age and gender. So if you want my old lectures, I already have in the Telegram group, but this is the link. I will paste it in the Telegram group also. And I will paste it here also in this chat. You can go through all my lessons. Okay, so there are about, right now, till now, there are about 65 classes done. Okay, so today is 66th class. Okay, so we did, we did three variables and we created, we created HTML to change the three variables and we displayed the three variables. So still, I have to explain a lot about the state variables, which I will do today and tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So for today, just write down this first and then I'll go, I'll go further. So just write down this. Okay, half is here, half is here. Just write down in notepad in five minutes and then we will go further about the state variables. I'll give you five minutes to complete this to this project.
Okay, so I hope uh, everyone might have finished this one. So if you're not done, do it. Uh, I will put it in one page after the class and copy paste. Okay, if it's done, very good. Let me copy this. Okay, now, now what I will do, I will create three components. Maybe I can say function name component or I can call as constant name component. It is an arrow function. Another component will be age component. Okay, and then third will be gender component. So I'll create three component and I will put this name part inside the name component. And I will expect that name will come here as a props. So I'll put it in the curly bracket name. Okay. Similarly, I will create age component and gender component. And here I will put, I'll put age component in the age component. And I'll put gender component inside gender component and here I will pass age as a props and here I'll pass gender as a props and I'll call this name component here in this app okay the so name and then I'll put age and then third component will be gender and each one will, we will pass the variable name inside the name component. And for the age, I will pass the age as a props here. And for the gender, I will pass gender as a gender component. Now you will see the variables are created and they are passed in their own component. Okay. So here, age is there, gender is there, and name is there. So I cannot change the name directly here, or age directly, or gender directly. If I want to change it, I have to use same thing as we have to use this buttons and this functions to change the name, age, or gender. The only thing is that I create a three component, I pass the variables there, but changing will happen through here only in this button. Uh, button tag, button element. So let's ch check this now. The display has not changed. We are seeing the same display. If I click change name, I'm getting name getting changed, age is getting changed, and gender is getting changed. That means here we are changing it, and then we are passing it to different component. Let's try to put button also in their own component. I will put name here, change name here, and age also, I will put it in age component, and gender also, I will put it in the gender component. Since I am expecting this function also, so I will also pass this as a second attribute here. And here I'm expecting say age, so I will also pass set age. Here I, I'm expecting set gender, so I will pass set gender here. And in the name component, I will pass also this function, set name is equal to set name. Set age equal to set age. Set gender equal to set gender. So now everything will work similarly since now everyone 
everyone is uh, getting things in its own component, but the functionality remains same. So, so though you have seen the creation of a state is in the main component, all other components will receive the parameters, the respective parameters or props, whatever we need for this component. Okay. So because many times your application may have one main component with many small, small components. So you will not create state variables in all in all components like this. You will better create it in the main component and then pass it as a parameter to the small components. But if we have two, three large components, then you will create this state variables in larger component and then pass it to the smaller components which needs the variables which you have created here. Now we have created the string here and we have created the numeric here and we have created a string here. Let's let's merge all these three into one one variable and that will be the object. So what I will do now I will say constant state. I can name anything. I put it here as a state since it is a state variable so I just give the name of state. I can put object, I can put ABC, XYZ, whatever I want. And then I will say set state. Now here I will use react.use state and in the default value instead of the string or numeric I will create object. And object will have some default value for example object will have the value of name as jack default value age of 34 as a default value gender of male as a default value so now what I am doing I am not creating individual variables like this I am creating only one variable which is an object and which which uh, which has different name age and gender so I'll delete this three part. And instead of passing the name and set name, I will pass state and set state. State and set state. I will pass set state and here will be state. Okay, so to display the name, what I will write is state dot name because name because name is the a property of the state. To display it, I can say state dot age, and here I can say state dot gender. So in each one, instead of name, I will pass state and set state. So I'm just changing one one variable, um, multiple variables to one variables, one variable. Now for the name, I will say state dot name. Uh, and this part I will right now comment it. Okay, so this part I am commenting it because I have to explain this part. So in each case, I will say state dot age. Here I will say state dot gender. Okay, so let's do that one. Let's see how it will work now. So we have Jack, age, and gender. It is coming correctly, but when I click buttons, nothing happens. Why nothing happens? Because we have not written the code to update the state. Now we have to update this object <coughs> whenever someone change the name. So let's do this one. So I will say set state. Now what do you think? What should I pass here? Can anyone suggest me? I want suggestion from you. How can I update state. this state? Yeah, tell me. What should I say? It's a state of state, I think. So. You have to type it. I, I don't understand what you want to say. You to type it in the chat.
feel also, but sometimes I I feel difficult in understanding the pronunciation of everyone. So if you want have suggestion, just write in chat, write in the chat. So I know what you have said. Okay. So so state dot name. Okay, I want to change the name. I want if I put state dot name it will be same. I'm not changing it. If I put state dot name, I'm not changing it. Okay, so so what I have to do, I have to build the object. Since this is the object, so we need definitely to build the object. So let's see how to build the object. So here I will be putting object. Okay, so now what I have to take, if I put in this object, if I put name equal to, for example, Tony. Okay, so what will happen when I put name equal to Tony? What do you think? What will happen to this age and gender? This will be gone. We won't be able to, we will be able to see the gender and age because we are deleting age and gender. We are only updating the name. So either I can do name equal to Tony and I can also say age equal to state dot age, whatever age was there in the age, I can put it same thing. And I can also say uh, gender equal to state dot gender. This will work because I am updating Tony and also I am keeping age same and gender same, whatever it was. Whatever it was. Okay, so let's try to do. And same thing I can repeat for, same thing I can repeat for here age. I can update the age with the new value, for example, maybe 21, but name I can keep it as state dot name. So I'm keeping the name and gender same. I'm updating only the age. I can also do same thing for the gender. I'm keeping name same and age also same like age state dot age. And gender will be I can change it to female. So this will work but this is not the right way and I will tell you what is the right way and why it is not the right way. So let's see how it, whether it's working or no. So I'll refresh the page. I'll change name. It is changing. Age is there same. Male is there. I'm changing the age. It's making 21. I'm changing the gender. It's becoming the female. So yeah, get, get it right. Whatever you're written right. So now, right now we have the three variables, right? So it is easy to write down three variables here, here, and here. But sometimes when your application grows, you may have 100 variables or 50 variables. So writing 50 variables again and again here will be little difficult and not advisable. So what we have to do? We will be doing some different way. What is the different way? We have to say, spread operator of the state. So I will say spread of operator of the state, comma, and then I'll update with the name equal to Tony. So what I'm doing, I'm taking all the key value pairs of the state, which I explained when I was explaining the spread operator. I will take all key value pairs here as a state, and then I will update the name with the new name Tony. As we have seen in the example, I was passing A, B, C, and A. So the one which was coming second time was overwriting the first time. So when I'm passing the state, that means I'm passing the state with all these three values. And then what I'm doing, I'm putting name equal to Tony. So I'm only overwriting the name with the name new name that is Tony. So now, I if even if there are 100 variables in the state, I will only write down this one line, uh, this, this line of the code. I'm only updating the name here, but I'm taking all the previous value of the state. Now let's see if it is working. I change the Tony name. What will happen if I put this name equal to Tony before state variable? What will happen? Will it work? Yes or no? No, Kate is saying no. Pumpa is saying yes.
So Nu Singh is saying yes. Anchi is saying no. So the answer to this question, Kanna is saying no. So answer to this question is it will not work. Now why it will not work? Because I am putting name equal to Tony here and then I am putting the state variable. That means what will happen? Name will over, be overwritten by the state values. What is the state value? It is Jack. So whatever you have put will go waste because it will be overwritten by the state value. So this will not work. Let me show you in browser. If I change name, it's not changing. See, it's not changing. Why it's not changing? The reason is it is first changing it, then I'm overwriting with the state value. What is the state value? This is this one. So it is not working. So we have to put state value before we make any change. So let's do it for the age. So for the age, what I will do? I will put the state value first and then I will overwrite with the new age that is 21. Same thing I will do. Same thing I will do with the gender. I will take all the state values that is whatever we have and then we will update with the new gender. Now we'll check it. So now it is changing, this is changing and this is changing. So this is the right way to put first state value and then gender. Put state value and then gender. Is that clear? Okay. Okay. So this is what we did about the state variable. We can use numeric string or uh, boolean or array in my state value or I can use the object. If we have lot many uh, variables, we will use the object. If we have one or two variables, then you can create separate variables for each one, name, age, gender. Now it is three, you can have three one. But sometimes your application may have 40, 50 variables. So it is better to create object and put everything in the object. So it is easy to manipulate in the component. Okay, so this is the basics of the state. Tomorrow we will we will create the input box, you know, input box like this, input box, this is the input box. So we will see how to manipulate this value using the state. So we have to use the state because this is the changing. See, this is the changing. So we cannot use props. We have to use the we have to use the state variable. Anything which changes on the page, we have to use the state value, state variable. So tomorrow we will work on this form field, how to use a state value for the forms. So that's all for today. If you have any question, you can ask now.